you have based on the user requirement suppose if i want to you know call to the one, one of my friend then i have to request to the nearby base station the nearby base station will search for the another base station like that it gets connected once the call gets disconnected then automatically the beam will be switched off so minimum radiation will happens there and the power wastage will be you know will not be there it is minimum uh, em exposure will be there the difference as we have seen that in previous slide the latency for the 4g is 10 milliseconds for uh, you know 5g the promised is less than 1 milliseconds the data rates are uh, gigabits of data rates because the bandwidth is higher and you can accommodate since the bandwidth is higher you can accommodate you know millions of customers or connections per kilometers and this is the for the 4g like you know high power antennas are used in a 4g so the continuous transmission will be there and whereas in 5g you have since the frequency is higher the my wavelength is smaller so it cannot penetrate to the building so it gets attenuated when it hits a building or it, when it hits a tree or when it hits a, a kind of a water drops so the best solution is that the if i want to communicate this user wants to communicate this user the communication will not happen directly to this it has it has to go through, through the next to the it, this mobile phone will search for the next uh, you know uh, children base station these are the red colors are the children base stations are small base stations and this is a mother base station which is a massive mimo uh, uh, tower using a massive mimo antennas are installed there the the user will communicate to the nearby base station and another base station then it communicates to the the another the, uh, mother base station mother base station will search for the nearby the another base station and it gets connected to the these things so here using a the you know uh, uh, hundreds and thousands of uh, low power uh, emitting base station antennas will be used here to transmit it so it is since it is a low power so uh, we feel it is uh, most of people have started objecting that when the 5g is coming to the picture you have a lot of exposure em exposure will be there but some study says that the that the uh, acknowledgement comes from the user then this base station gets activated otherwise it gets off and uh, when it comes to the area coverage with respect to the 4g and 5g 4g will have longer coverage because your frequency is lower the range will be approximately 30 uh, 50 to 20 kilometers range will be there whereas in 5g the frequency is higher your the range will comes down to the few you know meters to kilometers around 5 kilometers See, every 5 kilometers n number of base stations need to be installed so so uh, i think everybody knows the uh, basics of antenna and all so uh, as a antenna design engineer if a user comes to you and asks that uh, so and so particular antenna i want an antenna to be installed on so and so aircraft or a kind of a base station tower then what generally any uh, antenna design engineer what are the input parameters generally people used to require is mostly a frequency second is the the what is the bandwidth second is third is the what is the gain required and now uh, the fourth is the, what is the type of radiation pattern and polarization and fifth is the Uh, you are uh, what is the type of application what is the size allocated for your antenna because most of the uh, places uh, they, you know uh, when we we start some kind of a design and all without knowing all these things and all people start uh, you know uh, developing some kind of antennas and and they will be they'll uh, make a very massive size of antenna and uh, when it comes to reality they it will not be useful for the uh, real application side so this is uh, there are uh, uh, two types of communication generally the communication happens in wired and wireless communications so generally the antenna as you all know this is this kind of a transducer or the it converts one form of energy to another form of energy another name is for the antenna is called special filter and uh, second is the uh, other name is called also called as a polarization filter also generally what you are doing the designing of antenna is generally a standard input impedance is 50 ohms and your free space impedance is 371 ohms the antenna role is nothing but you know compromising between 50 to 377 ohms the the antenna role since it is a active component antenna is a active uh, a component 
And these are all uh, various types of antennas and all. In olden days, uh, you would have seen that the whip antennas, the, these are all monopole antennas which are installed on a car. You know, car. Now slowly, uh, the uh, cars are coming with a small, tiny uh, kind of a blade type of antennas. So these are all the main parameters for any antenna design engineers to be considered. So uh, basically, the input impedance or the return loss is a one factor. First antenna, you would have uh, gone through many papers and you started designing the antenna. Then uh, for analyzing the antenna, the basic parameter is called return loss or uh, you know, VSWR, voltage standing wave ratio. Once that VSWR is qualified, then you have to go for the radiation pattern measurement. After radiation pattern measurement, you have to see the, the gain uh, values and uh, radiation efficiency parameters also. And if it is in, a, in the case of array, then you have to uh, see the mutual coupling between the elements to element, like you know, Massey MIMO uh, type. So this is the the graph for the uh, the return loss, how it looks like in frequency versus the S parameter in dB. And these are all. You know, uh, as I said, uh, what type of polarization, like, you know, is it what type of antenna it is, directional, highly directional, you know, uh, omnidirectional radiation pattern is required for the particular application, like, suppose if I want to, uh, if I want an antenna for the base station applications, it is high, completely highly directional antenna is required. Uh, for the Wi-Fi applications, you need a omnidirectional radiation coverage like this. So another uh, a very important parameter generally people will not consider when they do the measurements, when they do the measurements, what is my transmitting antenna polarization, what is my receiving antenna polarization. Without doing that, they simply uh, do the measurements in an anechoic chamber uh, without you know uh, seeing the, the polarization. If the polarization is matches, then only you'll get a, you'll receive the signal. Otherwise, the, sometimes in our lab also, students or research scholars, they used to blindly, they'll go with the, uh, when I ask to mount the antenna, they will mount it in a different direction without, you know, you know, seeing the what type of polarization is transmitting and receiving antennas are there. If the two polarizations, two antennas are at the same, same polarization, then only the electromagnetic waves will be, you know, uh, you know, antennas gets communicate each other. So there are uh, different types of polarizations, linear and uh, circular and elliptical polarizations. I'm just skipping this because I'm assuming that you know the the basics about antennas. Am I correct? Yeah. So uh, there are another uh, thing for the any kind of applications you have to see uh, when some end user comes to you and say that okay I want this antenna for the missile or I want antenna for the base station applications. But straight away they start designing antenna of micro strip patch antenna or a kind of a 3D antennas or the log periodic antennas at all. As a design engineer, they have to see what type of feeding mechanism you need it. As an end user, which type of feeding mechanism is required, like you want to feed it from side, you want to feed it from the bottom, you want to feed it from the, uh, you know, the top. So these things need to be considered. Most of the people are not even considering this uh, thing, and they are just, you know, uh, going in a, a design point of view. At the end of the day, they are, you know, landing up in a, uh, kind of a wastage product like this actually. So a few of my students also, they have done the same thing when I said uh, design an antenna for the base station applications. Then they started designing using a coaxial probe because since it is a very easy uh, design, you just match it to the 50 worms and then do it. And they fabricated without, I, I didn't know that they have fabricated. Once the fabrication has done, uh, whereas in uh, the base station arrangement at all, I don't have access from the bottom, I have access from the side. Then I started asking about the, the antenna which you have designed is maybe fine, but it is not suitable for my particular application. You should ask the question, what type of feeding mechanism you need it. So, what, what I suggest is that when you want to design or when you get some kind of a sponsored activities from the, you know, respective agencies, so you should be, you need to be careful because it is a waste of time once you design some antenna and then again you have to run behind the antenna design at all. So this is uh, 
the anechoic chamber uh, measurements mostly mostly i think everybody knows right if anybody is not you know aware of it i, I can explain it it's fine okay thank you so so for our uh, you know base station antenna mimo and massi mimo antennas uh, we have tested uh, there is a tricky thing with the iit professors professor baskar ramurthy was the iit director he was the chairman for the 5g test bed and we were doing the entire system uh, you know measurement with the baseband signal they are pumping the data and then in a receiving mode we are receiving the the data with of uh, 150 mbps we have received it that time we have uh, designed the antenna or plus or minus 45 degrees pole rotations when uh, you know our engineer started installing the antennas the antenna generally look you know in a vertical direction but my antennas are looking like this in a plus 45 and minus 45 transmitting and horn antenna is mounted in a vertical pole rise but i am i'm getting a very weak signal then we started realizing the, the thing that either i have to rotate my the base station entire system to 45 degrees and or i have to uh, rotate the my transmitting antenna should be 45 degrees there we you know uh, we struggled for uh, um, this is a minimum silly thing but we will generally we we'll lose this uh, kind of a uh, thing then uh, the professor baskar amurthy is also he is a, he is a good rf and antenna engineer and he worked in signal processing also but he also he was just looking at that time and he was you know uh, getting tensed and the system is not working system is not working so later on the he himself again uh, seen that okay what is your transmitting pole rotation what is my receiving antenna pole rotation generally people used to in a hurry very they do the you know mess up things and we start getting tensed and uh, i think how many of you see seen that inside in a top of the tower you have a white box will be there on top of the tower how many of you seen that inside the box okay fine good uh, so the antennas inside the box of the base station antenna the base station antenna antennas are looks like this and it is not only the antennas you have rf and other uh, uh, front end modules and other things will be there inside this thing and you have only one cable will be there in in a older generations actually and these all antennas are connected to a one coaxial cable and these are the some you know uh, kind of a parameters which base station antennas as antenna design engineer has to be considered mostly when you talk about the array the main parameters are cross pole relations and isolation If these are the two parameters which generally affects your entire antenna system uh, parameters and this is another example how antenna looks like in the inside the base station this is called heat sink heat sink is used because you have here in the previous slide we you have power amplifiers and other you know active components will be there it generates huge number huge amount of heat so to dissipate in the form of uh, heat outside in a thermal analysis also has to be done so that is the reason the heat sink is compared to the antenna size the heat sink size will be very bigger because it, it has to take the entire amount of uh, the heat to the the outside world and these are all some kind of a base station uh, antennas Uh, for the mimo and millimeter wave frequency ranges also and uh, this is another uh, you know interesting thing every vip is asking for this kind of uh, camouflage towers actually these are our artificial towers it looks like a palm tree but generally in uh, you know vip areas and all the ministers they used to ask that uh, uh, we i am not getting a you know proper signal in my house then you have to Uh, they were asking to the telecom operators to give a bit beautiful solution and foreign countries they started using this kind of a camouflage towers and all now in india also in most of the vip areas and all they were using the uh, the camouflage towers these are the antennas and these leaves are the you know uh, non metallic leaves and this is exactly looks like a uh, the palm tree this is the product one of my student uh, uh, from the nit trichy and uh, Uh, he was the prime minister best research award he has designed the base station entire base station antenna in this compact size 
with a uh, few number of antenna elements. So, as we were you know, discussing in the previous slide, so 3G, 4G and 5G, the difference is that the entire system, including the, your BBU and uh, you know, uh, radio remote heads, merged in a single you know, box. There, most of the people, you know, earlier as I was saying that the base station failure was happened in the US, uh, they have considered the thermal, you know, a point of view also with the heat sink, but they didn't design properly the heat sink, so the base station got burned. This is how the, the radiation pattern looks like in a, a simulation uh, a platform it is shown here. The radiation pattern will be like this for the base station antenna. And this is another, you know, uh, uh, interesting thing is called a smart base station. Smart base station in the sense, uh, this is the, the base station antennas are installed in between the street lights. So it gives the purpose, of, it solves the purpose of both. One is data rate, you can, the person who is walking in that area, he will get the data rate as well as the light also, street light. So uh, this is how the antennas are designed and kept it inside, in between the uh, two LED panels. So, so how the massive MIMO improves the, your spectral efficiency means, generally the interference between the two base station uh, which limits the your spectral efficiency. So how do you get the uniform coverage is, is using the beam forming is a better solution for it. And this is how if my antenna is a single antenna, it has a broad beam and if start increasing the number of elements to 8, you have a, a kind of a, a beam will be narrower and if I start using the increasing the number of elements to 64, I can get the, uh, you know, uh, pencil beam kind of thing so that I can avoid the kind of a spurious radiations are uh, from the side or back, which is not really useful for the, uh, the base station. So this is, these are some kind of a deployment scenarios, uh, uh, it is proposed by the Ericsson. So if I want to cover the high-rise buildings, so I'll be, you know, joining the two elements, two antenna elements, two antenna elements are plus 45 degrees and minus 45 degrees antenna elements, so that I'll get a broader beam in the vertical uh, domain, vertical uh, angle. And then if I want a, if I want to cover it in an urban uh, scenario, which is low-rise buildings and all, then I need to, further I need to increase the number of elements to, uh, from the base station antenna so that I can cover the high-rise building along with the high-rise building, low-rise buildings also I can cover. And whereas in a, a suburban and rural area applications generally you don't find the high-rise buildings. So you'll have mostly the one or two floors, three floors maximum. So to cover that you have uh, the n number of antennas are joined together to generate the you know, narrow beam in a elevation plane and as the plane will be wider. And this is a generally uh, the as frequency increases my, uh, you know, attenuation levels, how it's gets getting affected actually. It shows the thing for the 6G frequency, they have chosen the six, 60 gigahertz, which is uh, more or less same, uh, less compared to the other frequency bands. And uh, when you see the uh, antennas sizes at different frequencies, as my Frequency is lower, my antenna to oral antenna array size will be very bigger because the antenna element itself is a, a bigger size. Whereas when you start increasing the frequency to high frequency, you will have a total panel size will be small because the antenna element size is uh, smaller because lambda is 3 by half. So up to 60 gigahertz, you have a total antenna size comes around 2 centimeter, less than 2 centimeter also. So here, in 60 gigahertz and high frequencies, majorly the, the feeding is a you know tricky thing actually. So you cannot uh, you know have the uh, very since your antenna size itself is a, a two centimeter in 60 gigahertz, and you you nowadays you are uh, getting the the RF connectors with a very small tiny pen, which is just just touching it. You cannot solder it also. If you solder it, then the, the tracks will get you know uh, short circuited. So now, when it comes to the, what are the design challenges, generally we faced it and uh, uh, as an antenna design engineer at high frequencies and uh, 
uh, when you talk about the 5G requirement for the compact base stations application side, uh, first uh, uh, challenge is that ki the, you have to see for that particular frequency, the component availability of amplifiers and filters and other RF components are need to be chosen. And uh, how do you integrate the, the RF components with the, with the board? And when it comes to the antennas, and you have to select the what type of antenna element you have to choose, microstrip line in that, what type of feeding you have to fix it. And what is the element spacing? Generally, the element spacing in antennas in array is 0.5 lambda. And then what type of polarizations you need to put it? And, uh, and what is your uh, mutual coupling level? And what is your uh, phase control mismatches? Because this board contains, you have multiple number of layers, like around 20 layers will be there. On uh, top of the uh, the antenna board, you have only the antenna, and the bottom of it you have a RF line, and the bottom of it you have a control line and power plane, and uh, like that. The last the RF component need to be uh, the installed there, populated in the back side of the things. Since the frequency is higher, the component availability for the initially the frequency band for millimeter frequency is is uh, you know designated 30 gigahertz. Uh, the availability of, uh, the component availability at 30 gigahertz is it's not there, it's, it's, it's a very uh, toughest task because it's a, uh, it is custom made uh, a component need to be done. So they have shifted the frequency bands to the 28 gigahertz. And another uh, factor is that key, in terms of uh, RF designs, uh, you need to see the, uh, the how to run the control lines and power lines, power, uh, uh, you know, when you are making it in a uh, multi-layer stack of configuration, you have to choose the, the pre-peg. Pre-peg means the, when you use the multi-layer uh, configuration, uh, you need to join the, suppose my antenna is there, and bottom of that I have a RF line, and the bottom of that my power plane is there, another is control line. I need to, see generally the material will be fabricated, it comes with there, one copper cladding on top and bottom, in between you have a substrate. So, like that, suppose if I want a, if I have an antenna, I have an antenna layer here. This antenna layer is orange color and blue color need to be joined together, like a, making a sandwich. In between, uh, they will use the, the pre-peg is the one more material is kind of a glue to, and they will use the thermal uh, pressing and all, and they will keep it for a few minutes and it, it gets joined like in a sandwich configuration symbol. So this is how the, the RF components and the vias, number of vias which has to run from the top layer to the 20th layer, in a high frequency, in a high frequency is 0.01 mm is affects a lot, lot. You cannot, you know, uh, you have to do lot of iterations for the, uh, and uh, you have to choose the, you know, what type of uh, uh, material, like, you know, because suppose if there, if there is any, any kind of uh, um, constraints the, for the, suppose if I want to design a compact and lightweight system, I need to choose the very thin substrate materials along with the you know uh, prepex and all and you need to choose a number of vias the number of vias whether i have to choose the solid vias or the the kind of a plated through pth vias and all and at the last layer of the pcb you have all rf components will be populated there and you need to when you are simulating all this you know entire uh, 20 layer or 30 layers of uh, board including the rf antennas and the power plane and other things with the vias, it, it needs a high-end workstations because you have n number of vias will be very high, it takes huge time to simulate it. And this is how the number of layers looks like when, when you design a multi-layer you know, uh, fabrication things. Earlier, because everything is like you know, baseband unit and the radio remote heads are joined in a single box in a complete a small uh, uh, very around 2 centi 2 centimeter uh, 1.5 uh, centimeter board thickness total oral thickness of the board should be 1.5 centimeter there th this challenges comes like this the you have to uh, take care of the prefects and the materials and the uh, and other uh, you know uh, properties of uh, materials for that particular frequency and this is how the vias will run from the bottom layer to the top layer of the antenna. And you need to, and another uh, important thing is that when you, once you design an antenna, 
And we can do any miracles in the simulation, CM simulation softwares. But when it comes to the reality, you need to search for the fabricator. Who will fabricate your, you know, you can, uh, I also designed that, uh, the, the antenna with the vias with the, uh, 0.05 mm is my diameter of the via. Then I started asking the, you know, fabricator whether you can fabricate this thing. Then I have to, I asked many people in the country, our in India, they said, no, we have a minimum, uh, via diameter is 0.1 mm. So you, you cannot uh, give whatever you want it. So in simulation point of view, we can do anything, in, in, any, anything in the simulations. Then after that, we have sent that uh, boat to the US. Uh, there is a company and China also, they fabricated with 0.05 mm this thing, but it is a costly, right? So after that, we started realizing, okay, this much, one, one boat cost with around, uh, around 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter over 15 lakhs they have charged for the fabrication only. Then we realized that, okay, why don't we go for the, our, whatever the available, availability in the, our country, the fabrication facilities and all. So what I suggest is that when you design something, you just contact the fabricator first. Before designing any kind of a antenna or any systems, first you contact the fabricator. My substrate, generally the substrate thicknesses also will be uh, standard, standardized materials will be there. And then you have to contact the fabricator that, okay, suppose if I am using the substrate material 0.1 mm, whether it is available in India or not. If it is not available, then accordingly, based on the fabricator's material availability, you change your design. That is the better. Otherwise, you design it for 1.1 mm, then the material availability at 0.5 mm, again you have to restart, rework it. It's a kind of a iterations you have to do it. So this is another kind of a the outdoor antenna for millimeter wave frequency and uh, so uh, most of the people, I don't know, uh, when we started working in a telecommunication sector, what we, uh, you know, we uh, understood is that there are three cells will be there, like uh, now the femto cell is also came into the picture. The macro cell, with respect to the macro cell, what is the cell radius, what is the coverage it gives? what is the amount of power which will be radiated from the antenna and number of uses can be accommodated and what type of applications you can use it. For a macro cell you have a longer coverage, for a micro cell you have a, the coverage is limited and the power, you know, transmission for the, the micro cell to macro cell, is the macro cell is up to 50 watts of power will be, you know, exposed in the, the free space. Whereas in pico cell it is a kind of a in-house, like in a in-building, like in a shopping malls and other things. So the power out comes with 0 0.2 to 1 uh, watts of power and cell radius is limited, like you know 200 meters uh, you can uh, give a coverage. So number of users can be accommodated, like you know Wi-Fi, you can consider this, this is 3 and 30 to 100 per uh, the, the device. So this is just mo mostly indoor and outdoor applications with a limited uh, coverage, whereas in my macro cells like you know up to 4G, uh, we will be, they will be giving the coverage of 30 to 40, 50 kilometers and the power emitting is 50 watts power, will, you know, uh, uh, comes from the antenna, base station antenna and the number of users will be more than 2000 uh, things and this is mostly uh, outdoor application side. This is what, uh, uh, when you uh, see that entirely in a single picture from the low band to the, to the higher frequency band, the number of base stations are getting increased. For the low band, you have only two number of base stations are required to uh, cover this entire region. Whereas in mid band, you have multiple number of base stations are, this is another type of base station, another base station, and these are all other base stations will, this will be communicated through a mother base stations like that. See, when it goes to the millimeter frequency, the number of base stations are getting increased. These are all beam forming antennas, MIMO and millimeter wave phased array, tiled phased array antennas will be installed there. These are all low emitting base station antennas, low power emitting base station antennas. And these are all some kind of a crucial, uh, you know, uh, kind of a application side using a 5G a technology like smart agriculture, uh, smart manufacturing side, smart cities and smart health gates, then smart educations and what each, based on each, uh, you know, applications, uh, what type of, uh, you know, features are required. So that entirely the 5G is has to, uh, the 5G, you know, the objective is that. And these are all some kind of, uh, uh, you know, um, opportunities in, as a design, antenna design engineer. 
So we can we can look into this domains. And another thing is that once your antenna is ready and you have made your antenna is perfect and your antenna is having a bandwidth of so and so and it is operating for the particular generation and it is giving a gain of uh, so and so. It doesn't mean that your antenna is perfectly all right. You have to, you know, uh, see your antenna performance with your system. So generally earlier when I was in Geo, my team used to do uh, the. They used to carry the instruments and equipment analyzers, power analyzers, spectrum analyzers, and network analyzers in a one vehicle. And on top of the vehicle, the monopole antenna is installed. And there is a base station antenna from the one main station headquarters. It is transmitted and the people will be moving that vehicle in a, every street and they will be capturing what is my signal strength, what is my data rate, what is my throughput and what is my you know, losses and other factors actually. So there is a, uh, the, those days it is a kind of a expensive thing like you know you have to engage the vehicle, manpower and other things. Now uh, recently in the past I think three, three years back the, there is a software, and there are n number of softwares are there now. Everybody started, you know, supplying the software. This is called, uh, you can do the network planning and commissioning. And, uh, you know, wave propagation analysis also you can do it. And which area, suppose if I am, you know, installing my base station here, what is my, the you know, data rates? And what is my, uh, you know, throughputs and other things will be, what is my signal strength in, a, in this particular area? You can see it through a, a different colors. So these are all the some parameters we can you can calculate using this kind of a software. For that you need a kind of your uh, the the area from the Google map and you put the the radiation pattern from the uh, from the software whichever uh, software you have designed the antenna and this is how it looks like. There are three base stations are installed here and these colors indicates. What is my data rates? What is my throughput? What is my signal strength? And what is each cell cell site? What is based on this colors? This is the cell site one, cell site three, blue color. It's, it's giving a coverage of these things. And with this, you can identify okay where to install the base station. This is called base station optimization. Uh, you know nowadays the telecom operators are doing all those things. And when it comes to the uh, uh, cell phone radiation hazards and the uh, in the you know society and many people started including the uh, professor uh, uh, Girish Kumar from IIT Bombay he always opposed 5G 5G is not required why don't you use 2G everybody needs the if, if he is thinking that okay you don't need the 5G but other people are also thinking that somebody asked me that uh, you are only claiming that and uh, 5G generation to generation when generation increases, power exposure, EM exposure is very high, then why are you encouraging all these things from the government side? See, my straight answer was, if I don't work, some other private agency will start working it. So, everybody needs uh, the entertainment, so they are sacrificing their life and all. So, I am also there in the society, so of course, I myself know stopping the, you know, stop using the mobile phone, it doesn't solve the problem of the uh, other uh, things and all. So, Professor Girish Kumar always supposes that no, 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 this 5G, these Gs are not required. You can start using the olden days like you know, 1G is sufficient or 2G is sufficient. Still, there are countries that are using 2G. But we are, you know, uh, we are only with the running, uh, you know, behind the generations to generations. Now, now 5G mobile is released in the market and 5G network is also released. And, uh, started, you know, buying the new new mobile phones and they are throwing the our uh, old mobile phones to the scrap. So when it comes to the, you know, uh, what way the cell phone towers affects your common, you know, life. So these are all the, some of the RF uh, uh, sources and based on the, suppose if you take the FM tower, this is my transmitting power, 10 kilowatts of power will be transmitted and TV towers and AM and Wi-Fi, cell phone and mobile towers. See the mobile phone, the maximum of signal is the, you know, generally uh, we have tested this thing, the, when you are making a call to your friend, 
and people have a habit of saying that they will keep mobile phone here directly. That is really a you know uh, dangerous I can say because we have seen that in a uh, using a VNA when you are making call you are you know pumping high amount of power to get connected to the nearby base station. Once the another user is getting picked up the power level drops down to minus uh, uh, 40 minus 50 dB of power level. But when you are making a call it goes to the minus 10 dB which means huge power will be you know, radiate it to your head and all. So, just, so I request you not to keep your mobile phone directly when you are making a call. Generally, the habit of everybody is like this. When you are making call, you will keep it like this. So, so from the, the power emitted from the mobile phone will be maximum of 2 watts in a GSM 900, in a 1801 watts. And from cell phone tower, this 20 watts, where it is, you know, no telecom operator is maintaining 20 watts of power. Uh, you know, uh, one uh, joke actually I have heard from the one of my uh, one once I went to the one college. They said they have given a complaint to the customer care cell saying that I am not getting a signal from past 20 days. Then they said, sir, give me a five minutes, you will get a you know full signal strength to multiple number of you know, points. And all. Then he was he was waiting for five minutes and he is in mobile phone signal strength increased to you know four points actually. Then again he called the same, uh, the, what is it called, the call center people, they say, sir, so it is a secret we don't tell. Which means, they, he, he doesn't know that what is a fact happened. They simply increase the power level to huge amount of power, so that you can give a, you know, a good coverage. Otherwise the customer will, you know, go to the another network. So he says that, no, no, your network is not functioning properly, so I don't want to use it, I want to switch it to some other network. So to retain the customers, because in the foreign countries you don't feel this kind of uh, things actually. Every base station, every street light will have a sensor, power sensors will be installed. If one operator is going beyond the limitations, that's all. Next one, one time they will give a notice to that and after that they will blacklist the company. But in India, in a sense it is a huge crowded country, nobody is there to bother. If any case, in case any uh, inspector comes to the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the nearby base station times, he will get some, you know, he will get the, the information will be leaked to the previous to the operator. He will start reducing the power level. Or else, he, he knows that, inspector knows that he is transmitting huge amount of power, maybe, because he is also staying in the same society, right? But he gets some kind of a bribes and other things, so everybody is passed, okay, within the limit. Every, uh, you know, month they used to do the, um, the inspection of the power levels. But in inspection, have you heard any news that uh, any base station and uh, base telecom operators are increasing the power level or decreasing the power, nothing like that. So when I was, uh, you know, uh, doing the network planning and commissioning in uh, Geo, the tribe person came, he's an inspector, he didn't even bother what amount of power I am transmitting. He's, he says, okay sir, fine, you tell me where I have to sign. This is uh, the, uh, the government system and because they also need uh, the money and other things are happening. But so most of the things, you now whatever, Standard says the 20 watts is maximum, but no telecom operator is following that rule. And simply they are increasing the power level to the whatever they want to satisfy the user's demand. So these are the some kind of uh, examples for the, uh, the antennas. So uh, this is the, you know, generally the RF radiation is a form of uh, uh, non-ionizing radiation. Generally it causes the molecules to vibrate and get, you know, uh, generate the heat into the, the body of the any human being or uh, creatures. So more dangerous things are ionizing rays are X-rays and uh, gamma rays and other things. So that's why every uh, scanning centers, if any pregnant uh, woman are, uh, you know, having some kind of a disease, they don't allow inside the, the X-ray centers and MRI machines also. Because it generates huge amount of uh, RF exposure, radiation side. And these are uh, various ionizing and non-ionizing uh, frequency bands. So, so, so what are the you know equipment or systems? RF energies will be used as generally in our real life, like micro ovens and radars, like medical application site, MRI machines and X-rays. In telecommunication side, you have a cellular base station antennas. In televisions and radio, FM and AM 
uh, things and all. And mostly the radio communication for the police is also, uh, you know, uh, low frequency antennas are installed there, but they will be, they will be keeping the, the walkie-talkie here and they are also getting exposed actually. <laughs> but it is their duty, they, they cannot uh, escape from the radiation. Uh, with that a lot of issues will come. And this is the number of users, subscribers connections from year to year is getting increased year by year. So, so some of the, you know, I am not making you to scare, but <laughs> this is a fact. This is a fact. Generally, uh, people used to uh, get some kind of, a, you know, people say that it is kind of a cancer or uh, some kind of a uh, blindness it comes or some kind of giddiness you will feel it actually. When I also faced the same thing when I was doing some kind of a radiation pattern measurement input of the antenna, I just stayed for one minute and then I can't even stay there because that much, you know, just the standard in front of the transmitting antenna that is around minus 10 dBm uh, power level we are just giving it. But still I, you know, those who are working in the electromagnetic side, really they, are, they, have, to, they have to be very uh, careful and they should not stand in front of them. Most of the people, they don't, you know, bother about the, you know, during the measurement, they don't even switch off, switch off the transmitting power and they'll say that, okay sir, nothing is there because the waves are not visible, it doesn't mean that it's not getting affected to your body. So there are some kind of effects like you know, thermal and uh, mostly uh, to the uh, pacemakers and other uh, things will be getting disturbed. So these are all some, some, some kind of uh, symptoms. Uh, this is based on again a study. Uh, some kind of uh, pain, headaches, uh, kind of uh, Skin burning also, sometimes uh, I think you would have faced it when you are using a mobile phone for uh, 5 minutes. To keep it like this, your hand starts burning. The antenna things. Since the antennas are there in the corner of the, this thing, in the bottom also. So most, mostly, and then, uh, nowadays I can see, everybody is using the stylish things called uh, uh, Bluetooth devices, earbuds and the neck bands and all. That is also very dangerous because it is getting continuously getting connected to your mobile phone which means it is the transmission, the RF energy transmission is happening between your mobile phone to your things and your main uh, subconscious memory is here. Definitely the memory loss and other things will, it, it occurs. So generally, uh, mostly who are at, generally at a risk means those who are working in that uh, the tower installation, a nearby tower who stays uh, near to the tower and mostly every you know houses are getting exposed with the you know cell phone towers and all but you we cannot escape because it is a government made some policies that is, and uh, now and in the uh, professor Girish Kumar says and he copied when I mean, he has uh, cut he has cut the some news in the newspaper saying that near to the schools and the uh, temple environment this base station should not be there it's getting exposed because small kids and all during you know, a small age, they are getting exposed to the EM exposure. It is really harmful to the next generation. But they have done the, some studies. It's it's uh, true only. But uh, telling ourselves single person and two persons will not help like that. And uh, he himself says, you stop using a mobile phone, every problem will be solved. But is it possible in uh, nowadays environment? Everybody is using the smartphones. Uh, continuously started, I, including me also. <laughs> I have two phones, I started using left and right. So that is the thing, and we are habituated. If you see the geo, I was the, the panel member for the free cast scheme. So actually we planned for six months, and based on the user's, uh, end user's requirement, we thought to in increase to another six months. Geo given uh, free data and the call rate for one and a half year. But actually planned for is three months to six months. So to grab the n number of customers, the you know first they will make you to habituate after that you cannot leave that place so that is a generally things that is happening in this so another uh, thing also is suggested by the, uh, the professor Girish Kumar <laughs> don't stay near to the pay station tower but where do you stay <laughs> see, everywhere if you see the top of the tower and you know uh, uh, three, four, four floor building, they are renting the base for the base station tower installation also. So you cannot say that uh, don't install near to the, my house. He says, who are you? 
But practically, if you see, it is if it is toughest task, but uh, the professor says whatever he says is correct. But uh, if you want a communication uh, to enjoy, and you are saying that you don't need a station to uh, near to your house, it's not uh, practically possible. But, uh, but that is only the solution. And he says uh, working in a few feet of the antenna for the several minutes it uh, causes the huge uh, you know giddiness and other kind of uh, diseases and all. And these are all some the base station towers. In a, as I said, the camouflage is like a tree type. And how many of you have seen this kind of logos in a uh, base station uh, towers where towers are installed? Yes, so this is the starting point where RF field is beyond the limit. And these are all various different different colors. This blue color is okay, fine. Then when you go to the yellow color, it gives a alarm saying that it is a very, uh, you know, a kind of a high EM radiation is happening here. And whereas in this, the orange color is very dangerous. So mostly with this RF radiations and all, the those who are uh, you know climbing the tower, they are you know sometimes you no know, base station. Antennas need to be replaced. Sometimes the base station antennas, some uh, mess up happens. They have to uh, climb the tower and then remove and then install. Those people mostly they will get affected. But uh, there is a provision that they have uh, created a, uh, from the ground station. They will switch off the power. Sometimes if they forget to switch off the also, uh, there is a you know different kinds of uh, uh, effects will be there. But for the labors, who is keep, you know caring for the labors life? <laughs> And these are all some other type of antennas, like as I said, uh, uh, as Professor Girish Kumar sir says, you should not install <laughs> near to your home any type of a base station towers and all. But for the, this building owner, it needs uh, some kind of money. So he, he just didn't bother about uh, the installation of the tower, towers and all. And these are all some other, and this, this kind of, uh, you would have seen that on top of the tower, there are two different types of antennas will be installed. One is this vertical, the uh, type, another is the dish antennas. And how many of you know that what is the purpose of these two? Tower to tower they Which one? Microwave. Yeah, yeah. This is microwave link only for the tower to tower and it is uh, arranged in a certain height. And they will see that in between any buildings are coming or not. If it is that, then they will see based on the direction they will uh, move that. And this is for the uh, the uh, the to provide the communication to the users. And these are all another interesting thing in foreign countries it is there. Inside this, this chimney you have a, the base station antennas are there inside. It exactly looks like a house. And this, this materials are the non-metallic uh, uh, structures they will be using it here. Some kind of a, um, a news uh, vans will be there, they are also using the the same kind of dish reflectors and the kind of a monopole antenna kind of thing, but it is it's a, it generates huge uh, you know RF radiations actually. You can also you cannot stay uh, more than five minutes near to that uh, the van. They are pumping high amount of uh, uh, power to the uh, from the you know, this monopole antenna. Um, so now when it comes to the conclusion. Since 5G is designed to work in uh, various uh, types of application side, so when you say it is uh, different applications, the complexity is the major challenge. Like you know, when 